Nobody should feel unsafe or be afraid of their relationship. This video is to offer men a few different resources that they can reach out to for help in an intimate partner violence situation. We live in a very interesting time right now where there's almost a dislike for men at this point because in our politically correct everybody is equal thing it's like there's an anti-male mentality that seems to be going on so they have all of the pressures that they already had and then we're adding that one on top of it obviously this channel isn't for that but that definitely makes it difficult more difficult than it already was for men when they are victims of abuse to speak out today we're going to talk about some different resources that are available for men and we're going to try to encourage them to do just that to speak out and to reach out for help when they need it according to webmd about 830,000 men in the united states experience some type of domestic violence every year that means every 37.8 seconds somewhere in america a man is battered according to the national violence against women survey and according to the national coalition against domestic violence one in four men will experience some type of intimate partner violence in their lifetime now that includes domestic violence it includes stalking i'm pretty sure and it includes sexual abuse women do tend to be victims of intimate partner violence at a higher rate but everybody no matter their race no matter their gender no matter their sex everybody deserves help it's okay to ask for help the first resource that we're going to look at is Male Survivor, and you can find it at malesurvivor.org. It is a nonprofit organization that is committed to preventing, healing, and eliminating all forms of sexual violence against boys and men, which is pretty cool. They do this through support, treatment, research, education, advocacy, and activism. Their services include online discussion forms for male survivors and for their partners, which is nice. Online therapist directory to help you find a therapist that will work for you and with you. Professionally facilitated retreats and workshops for survivors. And then they also do training for professionals that are helping to deal with people in that group. Second resource is called Stop Abuse for Everyone, or the acronym SAFE. You can find that at stopabuseforeveryone.org and I'm going to link that up there but it's different from what I originally found as an address. Same basic address but it's spelled differently. Stop Abuse for Everyone or SAFE is, an, is also a nonprofit organization and they work to help everybody but they specifically focus on people who are victims of domestic violence that kind of slip through the cracks or get missed. If you're looking at a normal, not a normal, but the United States normal way of looking at domestic violence, most of the people that get help are women in heterosexual relationships. That's like the biggest demographic of people that they deal with. So SAFE then specifically targets to provide services, publications, and trainings for people like straight men, homosexuals, male and female, teens, and elderly people. People that don't necessarily fall into the category that get helped most often. I think that that is an invaluable service. I'm really excited about them. Resource number three is called Victim Connect Resource Center. And it is a program of the National Center for Victims of Crime. You can find it at victimconnect.org. And it is a place for all victims of crime to learn about their rights and their options when they have been victimized in some kind of a criminal way. They have both a telephone helpline and a chat service. It's available Monday through Friday. They also have it available in English and in Spanish. And they have the option of more than 200 different languages. Now I don't know, obviously my video is in English and I believe that you can get it translated, but I hope that you would, if you know people that aren't English speaking as their first language, I hope that you would 
push that information out to other people beyond just my sphere of influence because one of the huge things that people have to deal with in America when we're dealing with abuse is that America is such a melting pot of people from other countries. Not all of them speak English or they don't speak English well and then you bring in not just the, the language barriers and in some cases racial barriers for ignorant people and then you have cultural dynamics that make it really hard for these people to even reach out for help in the first place, let alone actually be able to get help. So for this organization to be focused specifically on your legal rights and what you can do about it and be able to talk to people in up to 200 different languages is insanely important. So I hope that you will help me in spreading the word about this organization. Resource number four, there's a domestic abuse hotline specifically for men. I believe it's called the domestic abuse hotline for men where they provide options and support and they can help men to understand that abuse is not their fault and that it's not acceptable as a, a victim of abuse, just like we would expect for them to do for female victims of abuse. You can reach that hotline any time of day, 24 hours a day, from anywhere in the United States and Canada as well. And the phone number for that is 1-888-7-HELPLINE. And I'm gonna put that on the screen so that you can see it with the actual numbers. Resource number five is called One in Six. They're an organization called One in Six because it talks about one out of six males had experienced sexual abuse. And I thought before I was researching for this video, I thought that one in six dealt only with male sexual abuse victims, but that's not true. Actually, they strive to provide information, resources, and support for men that have dealt with trauma of abuse. And they do talk about domestic violence, sexual abuse, they talk about masculinity and gender stereotypes, things like that. So they're a whole lot more well-rounded of an organization than even I was aware of. And I knew that they were a good resource a long time ago for sexual abuse victims. So I would definitely encourage you to look into that, regardless of whether you are a victim of sexual abuse or domestic violence, some other type of abuse. I have full faith that they can help you get going in the right direction if you reach out to them. And the sixth resource that we're going to highlight today is called menhealing.org. And menhealing.org works specifically with men that are, it's words, not mine, black and brown men who are victims of sexual abuse. So they're an organization that's trying to specifically target marginalized groups of guys that are victims of abuse. But again, for this one, sexual abuse. But I would encourage you also, if you fall into those parameters, to look into menhealing.org. And then of course, there are a couple of more general ones that you could look at that are trusted resources that I would suggest for women, but they, they would apply to men too. One of them being the National Domestic Violence Hotline. It's not the domestic hotline for men. This one is the generic. I have heard some before negative talk about when men call. And if that's the case, dust your sandals off and keep moving. But they should be able to connect you with resources for men also. And if they do not treat you in a respectful way, let me know. I want to know because they should and they should be there for you too. And they should be able to direct you, like I said, to other resources, to local agencies, to the men's hotline. If you missed that, they should be able to direct you to be able to get help because you matter also. And the other one that I would bring up is called RAIN, or it's the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network, R-A-I-N-N. -N. They are the nation's largest anti-sexual abuse organization. They created and operate the National Sexual Assault Hotline, which is 800-656-HOPE, H-O-P-E, and they have lots of research and they are highly involved and a very credible source when dealing with sexual abuse, male or female, as victims. So I hope that you can look into those resources and be able to find answers and find solutions and find support. I know that we need more, more like them 
if you have experienced any of those or if you go and look into them and then you want to come back and tell me in the comments how that went i would really value hearing from you was your experience good were they helpful you don't have to tell me all of the details i don't need to know everything especially where it's a public forum you know public comments everybody doesn't need to know anything that you don't want to share but i would really value hearing if you felt valued if you felt respected if they were able to help you with the needs that you had and a lot of times guys when people are reaching out they're reaching out and they don't even know what needs that they have they know that things are not okay and they know that they deserve better sometimes they don't even know that they deserve better and they just know that things aren't okay and that's part of the benefit of reaching out to organizations and people who understand intimate partner violence, who understand the dynamics, who understand the situations, who understand the manipulation and the coercive control, brain trauma, and all these different factors, shame, and oh, so many different things that fall into intimate partner violence. It's not a hole we can dig out of on our own most of the time, most of the time. If we could do it by ourselves, we would. And doing it by ourselves continues to keep us stuck. Feeling shame, feeling like we're not good enough, feeling like this means that we're a failure, it keeps us stuck. And you don't deserve that. If you are in a relationship that scares you, whether it's a heterosexual relationship, it's a homosexual relationship, whether you're transgender, whether you're male, you're female, please reach out. The last two resources that I gave can be for either. And otherwise, you can go back through and hear the different types of populations or communities that these places service. But reach out. There's something out there. There's not enough, in my opinion, for men that are survivors. But the more that we talk about it, and the more that we acknowledge it, then the more hopefully that will change. We need to get rid of the stigma that men and boys can't be victimized. We need to get rid of the idea that it's not okay for you to cry, and it's not okay for you to hurt, because you're a human being. God gave you tear ducts just like he gave me. He gave you feelings just like he gave me. And you matter too. So, if you have been a victim of abuse, know that you're not alone. Male, female, everything in between, you're not alone. And there are people that care. So please reach out. You know, statistics are statistics. And when it comes to intimate partner violence statistics and male victims, they're really lacking. They're lacking for sexual abuse victims that are men and boys. And they are lacking in domestic violence too, undoubtedly. And I 100% believe that the further that we go in time, the more common it's going to be for stalking to be reversed also and be women stalking men. Not that that's exclusive. It'll just be both because our society is moving in that direction. But statistics aside, it's important to remember that there are people that are those statistics. You know, I use the number... 830,000. It's a big number. It is not 1.5 million, which is what it is for women, but it's 830,000 people. 830,000 fathers, brothers, uncles, cousins, friends, neighbors, coaches, pastors, bus drivers, everything in between. Each one of those people matters. I have known some really good men that have carried some abuse with them their whole lives. And I have known some good men who didn't even identify what they had experienced as abuse until they really started to look at it. It was just this experience that they didn't feel like was okay or they questioned. All the way to, yep, that definitely was abuse. And we're just not gonna really acknowledge it. But you know, even when they don't really acknowledge it, it comes out in their lives. Like, it affects their lives. It affects who they become. You cannot go through trauma and abuse and 
be completely untouched from it. That's the essence of trauma. Trauma will rock your world. It changes the way you look at the world. It changes the way you think your perceptions. Whether it changes your perceptions of the world as a whole, or it changes your perceptions of you. So sometimes they don't say anything, but they walk around feeling less than, or feeling dirty, or feeling ashamed. Sometimes they don't say anything and they end up abusing somebody else because that's how that goes. That's what happened to them. That's what's right. I want better for you than both of those. And even if either of those have been true for you in the past, we can't make changes until we acknowledge where we're at. Just like you can't look at a map and know how to get somewhere without knowing where you are first. Then you can figure out how to get there from that point, but you can't figure it out unless you know where you are. Where are you? Thanks for watching. I'll do my part to keep you safe by continuing to put out weekly videos about all things related to intimate partner violence. If you haven't already, please do your part by subscribing to this channel and hitting the notification button so that you don't miss a single video. Bonus points if you share videos with people that you believe will benefit from the information. Until I see you again, stay safe.